19th one a line graph on a graph sheet shows the revenue for each year from 1990 through 1998 by points and joins the successive points by straight line segments straight line segments the point for revenue of 1990 is labeled as a that for 1991 as b and that for 1992 as c what is the ratio of growth in revenue between 91 92 and 1990 91 91 see here let us read the question once again first of all we understood that there is a graph and that is a line graph right please read the question again a line graph on a graph sheet shows the revenue for each year from 1990 to 1998 year is there this is 1990 this is 1991 1992 like that it continues x axis represent the year right it is representing the year by points these are represented by points and joined the successive points by straight line segments they are talking about the revenue for each year that means see here listen to this you will understand suppose suppose see here what they are telling in 198 in 1990 The point for revenue for 1990 is labeled as A. This is labeled as A. This is labeled as A. This is nothing but your revenue, sir. Y axis is representing your revenue, sir. This is labeled as A. Then they are telling 1991 as B. This is labeled as B. 1991 is B. And 1992 is C. This is labeled as C. That is what they are telling in the graph, right? They are also telling. They are asking actually, what is the ratio of growth in revenue between 1991-92? between these two years and 1990 91 between these two years that is what they are asking this is the given data in the question this is the given data in the question now read your first statements if you want you can name these points if you are confused pqr what whatever you want you name it now read the first statement alone the angle between a and b and x axis when measured with a protractor is 40 degrees this angle they are telling with x axis it is 40 degrees this angle is 40 degrees and the angle between c and b and x axis is 80 degrees c and b and x axis this angle is given as 80 degrees actually the diagram is not drawn to the scale it looks like a straight line but there is a deviation right the diagram is not drawn to the scale this is given as 80 degrees what they are asking in the question what is the ratio of growth revenue in between 1991 92 and 1990 91 see here 1991 this was the growth this was the growth that is nothing but pq in 91 92 this was the growth between b and c what is that growth qr they are asking the ratio of pq uh, by ulta they are asking 91 92 and 1990 91 right yes. they are asking qr divided by pq that is what they are asking the ratio clear till here everyone everyone clear see here if i drop a perpendicular i call it as some other point d similarly if i drop a perpendicular i will call it as e If you observe here, I want QR by PQ ratio. It should be a ratio. See here. If I calculate, see here. Difference between 1990 91. Whatever the gap is here, same is the case here also, right? Same is the case here also. If I take the tangent of the angle, tan 40 is nothing but tan tan 40 is nothing but opposite by adjacent. Opposite is nothing but BE. Adjacent is nothing but AE. Adjacent is nothing but AE. But B is nothing but equal to PQ. Both are same. B is nothing but equal to PQ. Tan 40 is nothing but PQ divided by AE. PQ divided by AE. Similarly, if I take the tan here, tan 80 is nothing but opposite by adjacent. Opposite is CD. Adjacent is BD. Tan 80 is CD is also equal to CD is also equal to QR or RQ, whatever it is, QR. pd is nothing but i'll call it as pd itself you want the ratio of qr by pq divide this by this divide this by this understanding the approach right so it becomes tan 80 divided by tan 40 tan 80 divided by tan 40 is equal to tan 80 is nothing but qr by pd tan 40 is nothing but pq by ae pq by ae pd and ae both are same because ae is nothing but this pd is nothing but this Year gap between the the gap between the years will always be same. This will get cancelled. QR by PQ value will be known. You need not calculate that value. You get a unique value. That is what is required. Clear with the point? First statement alone is giving you the value. It is giving you the value. So statement one alone is giving you. Similarly, see here. If you see the statement two alone, 
the scale of y axis is 1 cm is equal to 100 rupees scale of y axis is 1 cm is 100 rupees this is 1 cm or this is 1 cm any idea is there for you no this need not be the same what is the question growth ratio for every year it is growing for every year it is growing between 90 to 91 it was this much 91 to 92 it should actually be more actually the diagram is not drawn to the scale actually the gap between pq should be lesser than qr that is the fact because for every year it is growing it is a growth ratio right that means they are asking 1 centimeter is 100 rupees we don't know whether this is 1 centimeter or this is 1 centimeter or this is 1 centimeter no information is given about the y axis understanding second statement will not give you a unique answer clear right vinita clear second statement will not give you a unique answer first statement will give you the unique answer but you need not calculate the value they were telling sir numerical answer we are not acha not required you only asked you only told the answer Twentieth one. See here. Before solving the twentieth question, let us understand the basic concept behind the lines, straight lines. Listen to this carefully. Suppose, suppose the equation of this line is three x plus four y is equal to five. Three x plus four y equal to five. There is one more line. Just, just some example. I am writing something like six x plus seven y equal to nine. Some other equation. These are the two straight lines. Suppose in your school days, 3x plus 4y equal to 5, 6x plus 7y equal to 9. You will solve these two simultaneous equations. You will get a value of x. You will get a value of y. What are these values of x and y representing? Intersection. It is nothing but the point of intersection. That means any two equations when you solve, you will get the values. That value is nothing but the point of intersection of those two lines. Lines or it can be anything. It need not be straight lines always. It can be parabola, ellipse, or whatever it is, right? See here. Suppose, suppose parallel lines, parallel lines. There is one line here. The equation is a1x plus b1y plus a1 equal to zero. There is another line which is parallel to it. a2x plus b2y plus c2 equal to zero. c2 equal to zero. These two are they intersecting, or will they intersect? They will never intersect. Parallel lines will never have any solution. No solution. For a parallel line, the ratio of a1 by a2 and b1 by b2 should be same. Only the constant should be different. Only the constant should be different. For example, suppose if this is 3x plus 4y equal to 7, this is 3x plus 4y equal to 9. They both are parallel lines. They both are parallel lines. That is parallel lines. Suppose intersecting line, intersecting line. Intersecting lines. There is one line. This is a one x plus b one y equal to plus c one equal to zero. There is another line. It is a two x plus b two y plus c two equal to zero. They are intersecting only at a point. It is a unique intersection point. For an intersecting line, a one by a two, b one by b two, c one by c two, no ratio will be equal. All of them will be different. And intersecting line will always have a unique solution. Only one solution will be there for an intersecting line, right? So Still. intersection is C one, C two. No, no, no. That is, if not equal to C one, C two is parallel. What you are talking about is overlapping lines. That is my next one. See here, overlapping lines. Suppose overlapping lines. There is one line. There is one line with equation a one x plus b one y plus c one equal to zero. There is another line which is overlapping exactly on the same line. This equation is a two x plus b two y b two y plus c two equal to zero. For an overlapping line, all the coefficients will be same because they are exactly same. One is merged on the other, right? A one minute, sir. A one by a two is b one by b two is equal to c one by c two. This is overlapping line. For overlapping line, when will they meet or when will they intersect? Is the question. At this point, they are meeting. At this point, they are meeting. At this point, they are meeting. At every point, they are meeting. That means they will have infinitely many points with at their point of intersection. So it is infinite solution. Tell me something. So in the intersecting lines, the third condition is not required. Not required, but it is. It can be there also. Means if 
if v1 by v2 equal to v1 by v2 also, it will intersect, right? Ah, it will intersect. This is main, but this also can be a possibility sometimes. Okay. It depends on the question. This question is talking about this, so I took that. To so explain the next question, this explanation is required. Clear, right? Parallel lines will not have any solution. Overlapping lines will have infinite solutions. Inter intersecting line will have only one solution. See, here, there is a small mistake in the question. Find a pair of real numbers. It is actually not find a pair of how many pairs of real numbers x and y satisfy. Please change the question. How many pairs of x and y satisfy the equation? How many pairs of real numbers x and y that satisfy the following two simultaneous equations? It is known that the values of a, b, c, d, e and f are non-zero. All are non-zero values. Right? See here. The two equations given are ax plus by equal to c, dx plus ey equal to f. Can I erase this? Right? See here. How many pairs of real numbers satisfy the equation? So, equations given are ax plus by equal to c, dx plus ey equal to f, dx plus ey equal to f. If you take the first statement alone, first statement alone, a is equal to kd, b is equal to ke, c is equal to k into f, k is not equal to 0, k is not equal to 0, see here. Suppose if I substitute all these things in the first equation, it becomes the kdx plus kby, sorry, b is nothing but ke, key is equal to c is equal to kf. If I take k common, dx plus ey is equal to k into f, but k is not equal to 0. So it becomes dx plus ey is equal to f. With the first condition given, ax plus by equal to c and bx dx plus ey equal to f. Both are same lines. That means they are overlapping lines. Overlapping lines will have how many solutions? Infinite solution. Question is how many pairs of values? Infinite is the answer, right? That is one answer. Statement one alone is giving you the answer. Statement one alone is giving you the answer. That is infinite, right? Similarly, if you see the statement two alone, statement two alone is a is equal to b is equal to one, d is equal to e is equal to two, f is not equal to two c. F is not equal to two c, right? Because the question is how many, right? There are infinitely infinite, it all depends upon what is that infinite, but we don't know that exact fact. So. Right, that is why I am coming back to the statement 1 alone after I do the second statement. Statement 2 alone, please see the statement 2 alone. A is equal to B is equal to 1, substitute there. It becomes X plus Y is equal to C is nothing but C itself, because nothing is given about C. D is equal to E is equal to 2, it becomes 2X plus 2Y is equal to f 2f by 2x plus 2y equal to f a by what is the ratio it is 1 by 2 here here also it is 1 by 2 here it is c by f 1 by 2 equal to 1 by 2 is not equal to c by f these two are equal constants are not equal it is a case of parallel lines parallel lines will have how many solutions zero solutions zero is the answer zero is the answer that means zero is one value zero is one value you are getting a unique value but the only debate with this question is whether infinite should be considered or not. That is the most debate. Even no one can answer that question in fact. Because infinite means it can be any infinite. Right? So many numbers are there. Which infinite we are talking about? We don't have any idea about it. Right? There are infinite number of infinite. In fact. Right? We don't know which infinite we are talking about. Therefore, this should not be considered. As he asked the question. Right? Therefore, it should not be considered. If that is something given extra information about statement 1, then it is a real fact to accept. Now, statement 1 alone is not sufficient to answer. Statement 2 alone is giving you the answer. One of the statement is giving the answer. What should be the answer option? Option A. Option B. Approach clear? This is not giving the answer. That is not giving the answer. See, what is this? Both are same lines. Overlapping lines. Overlapping lines will have infinite solutions. Infinite solutions means how many? Infinite means according to infinite is 100 or 1000 or 1 lakh. Which infinite you are talking about? <laughs> we don't know. So, we can't exactly say. Ah, that we cannot identify from statement 1. Okay, so statement 
Mm. Because the, in simple, if I want to tell you what is our theme in data sufficiency, we should have a unique answer. Yes. You are not having a unique answer. Infinite answer. Is wrong. Second also who is not giving. Why it is not giving? <laughs> Zero is nothing but one answer, right? Okay. How many? What is the question? How many pairs of values? Sir? Zero pair of values. You are telling only one answer. That answer is zero. But uh, parallel line don't have any solution. Ah, see. How many is the question? How many rupees you have here is what I am asking. You will tell zero rupees. Is that not an answer? <laughs> <laughs> right? That is an answer. Okay. Numbers are correct. Clear, right? Sanjay, clear? Doubt? It all depends upon the way you think. Okay? Here. Yeah. I think till 20th we have done. 23rd is exactly similar to the same concept. It is also based on lines. Let us solve 23rd question. Please here. There are two straight lines in the xy plane with equations ax plus by equal to c, dx plus ey equal to f. Do the straight lines intersect with the question? Do the straight lines intersect? Are they intersecting lines with the question? Right? See here. Statement 1 alone says that a, b, c, d, e, f are distinct real numbers. Distinct real numbers. The equations are, these two are the given equations, similar to that question. See here, if they are, what is that? Distinct real number. Satyajit is telling here, see here, Satyajit. Suppose, 3x plus 4y is equal to 7, 6x plus 8y is equal to 12. Okay. This is also the same thing, this is parallel lines, right? All the values are different here, all the values are different. But these are parallel lines. It may be an intersecting line or it may not be an intersecting line. Answer is yes or no. It will give multiple answers. Ruled out. Understanding? It need not be always 3 and 4 only here. It can be anything. Ratio should be same. Right? Ratio should be same. Next. Similarly, second statement alone. C and F are non-zero. That is what we took here also. C and F non-zero only we took in this example also. Right? Still we will get two cases. It can be parallel or it can be intersecting. So we don't have any information. Statement 2 alone is also ruled out. If I combine both of them, what is the combination? All are distinct real numbers and they should be non-zero. Again, this example only we can take. Again, we are getting two cases are intersecting and parallel. After getting, after combining, you are getting multiple answers. Option is cannot be determined. Sanjay, doubt? Yeah. Both are similar questions. Both are related to straight lines. Approach clear, right? Everyone? 21st. Here, 21st. I will call 21st and 22nd. Here, 21st question. Again, in fact, directions are same. That is the reason I am not reading again. 21 to 25, direction is exactly the same like previous direction. Consider three real numbers x, y, and z. x, y, and z are real numbers. Is z the smallest among all these three numbers? Is z the smallest is the question, right? First statement alone is x is greater than. At least one of y and z. At least one of y and z. That means x is greater than y or at least x is greater than z. At least means minimum is 1. Right? x is greater than both y and z. x is greater than both y and z. It can also be a possibility. x is greater than at least one of y and z. That is what is given. Right? From this can you tell that z is only the smallest? Because the question is, is z the smallest is the question. Can you tell that? No x is greater than z. When you compare x and z, z is smaller. No information is given about y and z relation. Ruled out. First statement alone cannot give you the answer. Second statement alone. y is greater than at least one of x and z. y is greater than x and z. At least one of x and z. Or it can be y greater than both x and z. Same here also. X is y is greater than x plus z. But there is no relationship between z and x or z and y whatever it is. z is not given in the question. So it is not possible. If I combine both of them, see here, if I combine, combining, x is greater than y in the first condition and that y is greater than x or in here, somewhere did I made a mistake? Y is greater than z. Here, right? X is greater than y and y is greater than z. From this I can tell that y is the smallest. Y is the smallest. You will tell the answer as yes for this question. Similarly, or the other condition is y is greater than x, y is greater than x, this x is again greater than y, 
From this also you will tell that that is the small answer. You will again tell the answer as yes. Sir. After combining, you are telling only one unique answer. That unique answer is yes. Sir. After combining, you are getting a unique answer. Option C. Understanding, right? Everyone. Questions are not difficult. Understand the question and write it properly. It becomes very easy. Twenty-second question. Let x be a real number. Again, x, x is belonging to a real number. Is the modulus of x necessarily less than three? They are asking. Is mod x necessarily less than three? Is the question. First statement alone. Statement one alone. X into x plus three is less than zero. Please see here. X into x plus three is less than zero. Listen to this. Product of two numbers is less than zero. Less than zero means it is negative, right? Product of two numbers is negative. Negative. What are the possibilities? Negative into positive. Positive into negative, right? It is. X is negative. X plus three is positive. Positive will greater greater than zero. Here I'll write less than zero. Or the second condition is X is greater than zero. X plus three is less than zero. Right? These are the two possibilities. X is less than zero. X is greater than minus three. X is greater than minus three. Understanding, right? Or this can also be written as minus three is less than x. Minus three is less than x. See here. X is greater than zero. Should did I make any mistake? No. This is Negative, negative into positive is what I am writing. Yeah, right. X is less than zero. X greater than minus three. Right. So minus. Correct only, right? So it is this condition. If I combine both of them, I will get this condition. Right? This is one thing. Similarly, or if I write it, x lies between zero and minus three. What are the possible values of x? X can be one or x can be minus one. X can be minus two. These are the only two possible. But the question is asking about the modulus of x. Modulus of x is nothing but mod x is plus one, mod x is plus two, right? Question is, is mod x less than three? Yes. One is less than three. Yes. Two is also less than three. You are telling a same answer as yes. Understanding the approach? Statement one is giving you a unique answer. Statement one is giving you a unique answer. Similarly, if I take statement two alone, x is greater than zero. X plus three is less than zero. X is less than minus three. X is less than minus three. This becomes the x is greater than zero means the it can take any value one two three four etc. X ma x is less than minus three means the again it can take any value. It can take minus four minus five minus six etc. Right? If you combine the sets, it becomes the minus four minus six minus minus five minus six again one two three etc. It will come right. Question is for modulus. Mod x will become four, five, six, etc. One, two, three, one, two, three only. You are telling yes, sir. Is mod x greater than three, less than three? You are telling no. Is mod x less than three? You are telling yes. Sir. You are telling multiple answers. You are telling multiple sir, answers. Sir, sir, you combined wrong. I think x equal to one, two, three, four, and x equal to minus four, minus five, minus six. They won't intersect. They are not continuous. They are two different sets. No. Ah, so yeah, that's no, right. no, no. What is your question? They have taken u. Sir, so x is greater than zero and x is less than minus three. Yeah. There is no intersection. There is union. I am not taking intersection. Why there is an intersection question here? It is a union. X values which are greater than zero will also satisfy this. You substitute any value x is greater than zero here. Similarly, substitute x less than minus three. This should satisfy. But you will substitute only one value, right? So it is a combination of this. No, why I am why I should substitute only one? My main question is mod x less than three or not? Yes, sir. Right. So second condition here. Yeah, hmm. So we are uh, considering x into x plus three. Yeah. So x into x plus three should be less than zero. At a time I can pick only one value in x. Yeah. So that value must satisfy both the conditions of the second statement. That is, x is greater than zero and x is less than minus three. Yeah. Yes, sir. So that is nothing but intersection of x is greater than zero and x is less than minus three. Yeah. So that intersection is zero. I'm saying that there is no intersection of that. Okay. So one minute, I'll check it out. What you are telling is, if I substitute one value here, the same thing should come here. Yes. Sir. You are right there. Yeah. So it should be positive into negative only is greater than zero. Yes. So x is positive. This x plus three is negative. <laughs> x plus three negative is x is less than minus three. Yes. If there is no intersection, no value. That's what I'm saying. There is no value. Hmm. So Uh, second statement is ruled out. Second statement is ruled out. What so you said is actually right. 
because I was considering only for x, you are taking for statement a for theta. That is what you are doing is for satisfy this statement, then move on to the right, right you are right. So that means there is no intersection of values of x, that means there is no value which will satisfy the sub question. So here also statement 2 will not give the answer. Understood what he said? Sir, what if statement a, a is enough, I mean it is sufficient. Ah, that is what I am telling, I am talking only about statement 2, because statement a there is no debate, right? Yes. Statement a is correct according to you, right? Statement 1 is sufficient, forget about that. Statement 2, when we are taking the values, what he is telling is, if I substitute x is equal to 1 here, here also I should substitute x is equal to 1 only, right? That means there should be a common point with, between those two, that is what he meant as intersection, that is what he meant as it is. There is no value of x which will combine both of them, if there is no value of x, no value will satisfy this equation. Second statement is completely ruled out. Second statement will not even give you any value of x which satisfy this equation. So I cannot satisfy the main question also. But Second will give the definite answer for, for statement, for not for the main question. But you should answer for main question. No. It's not a different condition. Sir. No, no, main question itself it will give a definite answer. It will never be less than modulus 3. How can you tell? There is no value of x, right? This second is a second condition of a part. 4 is a condition of... One minute, one minute. Let me reason one person. Tell me. Shikhar. It's condition, same condition. X into x plus 3 has two cases, right? So it's case number 2 for the same condition. It's not the second statement. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Statement, second condition. Okay, you are telling that, okay, we are still in statement okay. 1 alone. Yes, we are taking, still so in statement 1 alone. Yes. Okay, so that means uh, this will not give you the answer at all. Uh, that is what you are telling, right? Yes. Statement 1 alone is not at all sufficient is your answer. Yes. Because here you are telling the answer as yes, but here we don't have any information. Right. Sir, but there is no set here and the set we are getting is 1 and 2. Answer. So it's giving correct answer as yes. So this is giving satisfactory. No, One minute. What Shikhar told is, what Shikhar told is, this statement and this statement both are still first statement only, yes, right? Yes. This is not. I am not combining both the statement. First of all, I am going individually. Negative into positive, I got this. Positive into negative, I am getting some values. No, no. This no, no. One minute. One minute. One minute. Positive into negative, I am getting some values, right? Some values which are not. I am not talking about intersection. I am just talking about these values. Out, these are all entirely thinking because belonging to statement one only still, right? This is not belonging to some other statement. Both of them are belonging to the same statement. This is x is equal to 1 and 2 here. Here also x is equal to 1 and 2 is coming. Why not we combine? That is my question. What will be the answer for that question? Still A will satisfy. Hmm? Why so, so second statement is not sufficient? No, Statement 1, only those values which satisfy statement 1 has to be taken. Ah, right. Yeah. So only 1 and 2 is satisfying. So 1 and 2 is satisfying main statement also. That is why it is That is what I am telling. That is the question what I asked. Finally, why not we take the combination of this and this which are common? We are taking combination only. So we are not actually that is my question to some students. They told, right? Some students told, some other, there is a, some other discussion. That is what I asked them a question. Here x is equal to 1 and 2 is present. Here also that value is present. Intersection is 1 and 2, why are we not taking that is my question. Sir, that is only we are taking, sir. Ah, that is what I am telling. <laughs> that is why that's why everybody that, is telling the same. That is why, uh, I mean, we are taking that only. x into x plus 3 is less than 0. Only, first only, in, in the first only, we are taking all ah. common solutions. This common completely solution. statement 1 only. Ah, that means, right? only two values will satisfy yes, out of the, all these values. Sir. Right. Yes, sir. Out of all these values, only two values will satisfy and those are x is equal to 1 and 2. Mod, mod x is equal to mod 1 mod 2, that is also 1 and 2 only, right? That is also 1 and 2. That will be less than 0. Answer is uniquely for statement 1. But what is you are telling? What is What are you telling? What I am saying sir, if you solve the inequality, first only you will satisfy this, this equation. See sir, if you say the inequality, no sir. You see the inequality, if you solve the inequality, only this region will between 0 and minus 3 will come. Right. There is no uh, at all uh, of this inequality. Those are only I, what I scratched here, what you are talking about. So only first situation is giving. That's what I am telling. I did not even move for second statement alone. I am still in first statement. In first statement, there are two values which are common in both of them. That is x is equal to 1 and 2. Yes. And those two are less than 3. Yes. Both the ways you are getting the answer as yes. yes. That means one is the correct answer. One is one is satisfying. I still need to go for statement B and check it out. Till here, everyone clear? That is what you are also telling, right? Right? Kaltuk. Till here. 
these both are belonging to statement one only right with these both there is only two values which are common one and two and this, those both are nothing but less than three only if you take the modulus also right if you take the modulus also that means these values are giving you a unique answer called as yes statement one alone is sufficient to answer the question but i should also check with statement two alone if statement two giving the answer is what i need to check right till here everyone clear this is still statement one okay. statement this is still statement one it's in statement one, one again there are sub conditions no, no, sub if you don't take also see if you have uh, inequality if you you know that is the reason you are talking in terms of that if you don't know i will teach like this sir. product should be negative okay. one is negative other is positive one is positive other is negative okay. you know inequality so you are directly telling in the range if that is less than zero, it should be within the range. Is what you are telling. Uh, uh, so statement this is statement one. This is statement one. This is statement one. In that again two two sub conditions. The product should be negative, Satyajit. Mm -hmm. When will the product be negative? One is negative, other is positive. Negative into positive is negative. That's what I wrote. Negative and this is positive. Mm -hmm. Or positive into negative is also negative only. Right? Okay. These both this entire thing is still the first statement. First statement, you are getting a unique answer as yes. Statement one is sufficient. That is what we discussed till now. Clear till here? Everyone clear? Right? Now move on to statement two. Statement two, is it sufficient or not? Let us check it out. You have doubt? Statement two alone. What is statement two alone? <laughs> x into x minus 3 is greater than 0. x into x minus 3 is greater than 0. No, See here. Second will come. Ah. Similarly, if you take x into, I am talking statement 2 along now, x into x minus 3 is greater than 0. Again, see here, listen to this. Product of two numbers should be positive. When will it be positive? It will be positive. Both of them are positive or both of them are negative. That means x should be positive, x minus 3 should also be positive. Positive is nothing but greater than 0. Here also I will write it as greater than 0. Or the second condition is both of them are negative. Both of them are negative. Understanding, right? Here, x can be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. This is x greater than 3. x greater than 0 and x greater than 3. It can be x greater than 0 means 1, 2, 3, 4. x greater than 3 means 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Right? Understanding? Similarly, here, x less than 0. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. This is nothing but x less than 3. x less than 3. x less than 3 can be which, which all values? 2, 1, 0 and then discontinuous. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Now again you take the combination. You take the combination or it is nothing but the intersection. If you take the intersection, what are the intersections here? So the first intersection is again only, only 4, 5, 6. Uh, only 4, 5, 6 because it is greater than 3. So you can directly ignore these things. So here you are getting 4, 5, 6. Here you are getting 4, 5, 6. Here you are getting 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2 is it present here? No. no. These are all negative values. Negative is it present here? The values which you are getting here, what are those values? They are greater than 3 or less than 3? They are what? greater than uh, Question yourself. No, understanding, no. right? No. Now, understanding. That substitute in the main question and question yourself. Is all these values less than 3? No. You are getting the answer as no. No is also a unique answer. Sir, but minus and minus. Sir, sir, two sir, two sir, two will sir the second part will second have part yes and no both answers. Okay, one minute. There is no 4, 5, 6 in here. No sir, uh, what you are doing is you are combining both of them. Ah, we need to but combine, right? No, we, we need not combine because they are two individual uh, mutually exclusive sets. Why? That's Why? what you told there also right to combine? No sir, there also are not telling to combine because uh, in no, the first one you have only one and two. One and two. From the first uh, sub question, mm. sub answer. Mm. From the second you do not have any answer. Mm. So you are only considering one and two. Mm. Because there is no answer no, in the second, second one. Second. We are not combining. Two we are not combining them. Zero For uh, statement B, mm. what we are doing is we are taking 4, 5, 6. Mm. And for uh, second part, we are taking minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 0. One minute, one minute. Substitute. Let us substitute. The easiest way to do is substitute and minus take it out. One, and minus one minute. Four if I take all these values 4, 5, 6, 4 if I take. 4 into 4 minus 3, it is positive. Yes. 5 into 5 minus 3 is positive. Okay. All these values will satisfy. Mm -hmm. So, these values will satisfy. Similarly, if I take these values, 0, 0 into 0 minus 3. No, no, 
it is zero. So it is ruled out. This is ruled out. No. One if I substitute no. one into one minus three, no. it is not greater than zero. Ruled out. Two into two minus three, not greater than zero. Right? No. Ruled out. These values if I take minus one, okay. minus one minus three is minus four. Okay. Minus four. Minus four. It is less. It is great. Sorry. Minus one into minus four. Okay. Minus one into minus four is positive. It is satisfying. This will also satisfy. This will okay. also satisfy. If I take mod of these values, mod x is one, two, three, etc. Here, yes, mod x is four, five, six, etc. Here, here you are telling yes. yes. Here, sorry, here you are telling no. Is mod x less than three? Yes. 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 Here you are telling yes. No. Here you are telling no. no. You are getting multiple answers. Multiple answers means second no. statement alone is not sufficient to answer the question. Understanding? You, if you are confused with the values, take some value substitute in the equation. It should satisfy. That is the values which we are finding. Clear, right? Clear? Anyone needs an explanation? <coughs> Here also same thing. You are confused with some values, which one to take, which one not to take. Substitute in this equation. Take x value, it should be less than 0. Only consider those values. Clear, right? I was just confused with the positive negative you are taking. Solving the inequality and... That also is one way. Statement 1 alone is sufficient, statement 2 alone is not sufficient, option A. Right, option A. Please see here. Sir, if you have any doubt, please ask me directly. Puneet, you have doubt? 24th one, see here, 24th. Ghosh Babu has decided to take a non-stop non -stop flight from Mumbai to no man's land in South America. Right? We don't know what is that no man's land. He is scheduled to leave Mumbai at 5 a.m. IST on December 10th, 2000. What is the local time at no man's land when he reaches there? When he reaches there. Statement 1 allowed. The average speed of the plane is 700 km per hour. Average speed is 700. Average speed is 700 km per hour means for one hour he will cover 700 but for how many hours we cannot determine because total number of distance is, distance is not given in the question, right? That is one way to explain statement one. Other way is even if distance is not, okay, second statement is anyway distance. We will come back to that point. Statement one is not sufficient. Statement two is the flight distance is 10,500 km. Distance is 10,500 km. Only distance is known. Time is not known now, or the speed is also not known. Speed is also not known, so we cannot uh, determine the time. Second statement ruled out. If I combine both the statements, uh, 700 kilometers per hour total distance is 10,500 kilometers. In one hour, it will cover 700 kilometers. To cover 10,500 kilometers, it will take 7 into 700 into 15 is 10,500. 1 into 15 is 15 hours. That means it started at 5 o'clock. But after it travelled for 15 hours, it will reach some other point. We can determine the time of that, when will he reach, only if the time zone of that particular country is given. But no time zone is given. Understanding? You cannot assume the time zone same as Indian time zone. Right? That is the reason IST is given in the question. Clear, right? That means, after combining also, Hold on, sir. Hold on. After combining also, you will get the an answer only if the time zone is given in the question. Because it is not given, answer is cannot be determined. Please be very careful this kind of with this kind of question. Time zone should be given. We don't know what is that no man's land. We don't know what is the time difference between Indian standard time and that time and that time. Nothing is known. Clear? 25th. 25th. What are the ages of the two individuals X and Y? They are asking you the values of X and Y. Ages. Statement 1 alone. The age difference between them is 6 years. X minus Y is 6. So many possibilities. 7 minus 1, 8 minus 2, 9 minus 3. So many possibilities. Individually we cannot find. Statement 1 is ruled out. 
the product of their ages is divisible by 6. That means x into y is a multiple of 6. It is a multiple of 6. Again, there are too many cases. It can be 6 into 1 or it can be multiple of 6 can be 6 into 2. Like that, there are so many individual cases you will get. If I combine both the statements, while combining both the statements, difference is 6 years. Product is a multiple of 6. Product is a multiple of 6. See here. Suppose if I take some values, 12 minus 6 is 6. Same value substitute here. 12 into 6 is a multiple of 6. 12 into 6 is a multiple of 6. In this case, x is equal to 12 and y is equal to 6. Right? Similarly, you can also take 18 minus 12 is 6. That is also 6. 18 into 12 is also a multiple of 6 because 12 is a multiple of 6. In this case, you are getting x value as 18, y value as 12. Again, you are getting multiple answers. You cannot uniquely determine the answer of x, values of x and y. Option.